Hello, I'm Robbie Clark. Welcome to my workshop. Um, before I start my video today, I just wanted to mention that next week it's the Midlands Model Engineering Exhibition, which is at the Warwickshire Events Centre, um, not far from Leamington Spa. Um, this is the, the, the flyer that, that I, I picked up, I think, last year for the, the event uh, this year, with all the details are on here and on the back if you want to have a look at that but also um, if you've not heard about this particular one there's also um, a Midlands Model Engineering website as well that you can take a look at so this is from the 17th to the 20th of October quite a long show a four-day show um, all being well <laughs> and I'm planning on being there on Thursday the 17th the uh, opening day of the show um, so if you happen to be there as well and you happen to see me wandering around there do come up and, and say hello to me I, I'd love to meet uh, you face to face uh, um, just for a, a very very brief chat obviously because there's a lot to see at this show and uh, there's lots of things I want to have a look at um, over the years I mean I've been to this exhibition quite a number of times and the organisers of this also used to do um, the model engineering show in London at Alexandra Palace but unfortunately that uh, finished uh, a few years back now um, because in the south of England there at one point there was about four different model engineering engineering exhibitions that I, I used to visit. Also with this one um, some of the trade uh, stands that were there have uh, dropped out as well unfortunately but luckily a lot of the, the smaller companies are, are still exhibiting um, it's a good opportunity also if you, you need any materials which I will um, is to buy them from uh, the various um, vendors there and save on postal charges which having metal posted to you is always a very very expensive thing um, one of the stands I'm planning on going to is uh, Stuart Models and I'm, I'm rather hoping that they, they might have um, some show deals available because um, I have my eye on um, one of their kits the V10 vertical engine um, this is a kit that I really like to build a lot of the engines I've built have been uh, mostly horizontal and I'd like to have a, a go at making uh, this particular kit uh, but we just have to see uh, um, if they've got anything on offer this year. But anyway, um, I hope that, that I might see uh, uh, one or two of you there, who knows, you, this might be a show you go to but obviously being on for four days there's lots of opportunities on, on different days you can go to it obviously but there we are anyway without further ado um i'll, I'll start the uh, the next video for you thanks very much bye for now hello i'm Nobby clark welcome to my workshop um this is the uh, the third uh, in the series of um machining the uh PM research engine. I'm still working on the um, the base, um, but I'm hoping during this sequence that I can complete the work on the base. Um, so what I'm going to do first is is drill through here, um, through both both parts here, uh, which will take the uh, the shaft for the flywheel and cam. Um, I've spent a lot of time setting this up to get the um the position here as accurate as i possibly could because the uh the measurements um required here um are quite critical from the 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 bottom of the uh the base uh to the center line here which will also correspond to the uh the, the sort of center of the um the piston uh, connecting rod as well so th this is quite a, an important one um, this needs to be um, uh, drilled and reamed for a quarter inch um, so I'm going to take it uh, steady um, uh, start with a, 
the centre drill first just to uh, give a guide for the uh, the drill itself. Um, the clearance drill I'm using for the reamer is uh, 1564th. Um, when I've uh, drilled and reamed quite a lot of quarter inch holes before so um, generally this that, that drill size you know, seems to work quite well but well, let's see how we get on with this. Just going to change over now to the, the drill. Now I've got the drill in position now. Uh, so the, the drill so I've had to put the drill quite a long way into the uh, into the chuck because I've not got a lot of uh, Z height on the, this milling machine to do this, and I've got I've got the uh, fixture plate mounted fairly high up. I probably could have done with having the. Uh, uh, the fixture plate uh, a little bit lower down really but um, I can probably show you later what the problem was there but let, let's let's have a go Hopefully it's, it's gone okay, and I've drilled obviously through uh, this uh, top lug and the uh, bottom lug as well. But I'm going to remove the drill now and uh, hope that I can get the reamer uh, in, in high enough in up into the chuck to, to clear all of this. All right, well, let's see how we get on with the reaming stage. Well, it seems to have worked okay. Let's jump here. Just hope everything is fine and these holes are, you know, absolutely parallel to one another uh, to take the uh, the shaft. Uh, so we can perhaps now move on to the um, the, the next part. Um, I've got to uh, to um, I'm swing this round here. You see, this end uh, is where the um, the cylinder will be mounted. So um, we'll need to um, 
drill a hole through here, which will take the um, the cylinder cap will fit through this first. So um, it does call for drilling and reaming um, three eighths of an inch. Um, but we'll just see you know how I can set this up. Um, but obviously I'll bring you back for for that part as well. Uh, the next um, part is to is to drill through uh, here. Um, the drawing gives you um, a size of three eighths of an inch, um, but in the drawing it says to, to drill and then ream to three eighths of an inch. Um, unfortunately, um, my milling machine is so small; it's not got enough Z height. Uh, to get this high enough uh, to be able to get the reamer in. Um, I have a chucking reamer but it, it's just too long unfortunately and there really isn't any other way I, I can do this. Um, on this end uh, is mounted the, the cylinder um, but between the cylinder and this surface there's um, a little end cap. Uh, the idea being that um, this is mounted on to the uh, machined up obviously and mounted onto the cylinder and that goes through the hole here. Um, the, the little boss on here is obviously much larger than 3 8 so when this is um, machined this would be machined, the diameter here would be machined down to 3 8 Now um, this obviously if I, if I I'm, what I'm going to do is actually to just to directly drill this three eighths. Um, I found um, among all my drills a, a three and well, quite a nice three eighths of an inch stub drill, um, which uh, I'm, I'm hoping will do the job. I, I've checked this out, and this will, um, I think, just about go into the chuck to give me um, enough clearance to drill this out. So. Um, if I drill this 3 eighths, um, I'm hoping it will give me a reasonably accurate hole. But if the hole is slightly out, then obviously I can machine this to be a good fit into here. So I'm hoping that's going to work. And obviously with, with some things with the milling machine I've got, there's just got to be some compromises, basically. Um, I spent ages... Uh, this is an, another day actually, spent ages this morning um, working out how to get the, the centre uh, here in this in this sort of this direction. Um, the line here was already marked out um, so that it's exactly the same height as the holes going through uh, for the, the shaft for the flywheel. Um, the, uh, I, I, mean, I just hope this is in 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 exact centre position. I don't know how accurate this shape of the the cast thing is, but I'm having to rely on it being um, accurate enough. Um, I've already uh, centre drilled this, um, and I'm going to drill through with a, a smaller drill first, uh, hopefully to give this a good guide for the. Um, three eighths of an inch drill so i'm just hoping this is going to work okay but anyway i'm um, going to uh, drill in with the center drill just a little bit more and then find a, a perhaps a short drill stub drill that i can drill through you know perhaps about half the diameter of this one first
it looks as though it's gone through okay so I'm hoping that's going to be fine um, so that's the three-eighths of an inch hole drilled uh, rather nerve-wracking that <laughs> wasn't really looking forward to this bit at all let's get that drill out of the way so hopefully that's okay I just I think just need to clean up uh, the underside just a little bit as well um, so now I've done that um, the next job is going to be machining through here between these um, little guide rails and um, that's got to be machined in here uh, to um, three quarters of an inch um, and this is where the uh, the crosshead will slide in so this is going to be the seat for the crosshead um, um, so what I'm going to make next I'll probably do this off camera I'm going to make a little uh, stud to go through here and actually see whether the, you know, the drill might hold in there um, firmly enough I obviously want something that's not going to wiggle from side to side so that I can use uh, each side of a stud uh, to measure off uh, to find the dead centre here so that I can get the cutter dead centre to this position um, another thing that I did off camera um, let's just tilt this down a bit on the um, you won't be able to see this but um, after I drilled the hole through here in the top here it calls for um, a sixteenth of an inch hole to be drilled through uh, to oil the shaft. Um, so I've drilled through there in with a one sixteenth drill, and also drilled in. Uh, I think it was an eighth of an inch drill, just a little way in to give a little bit more of a reservoir uh, for some oil. In the drawings, um, it shows the. Um, if you like the sort of counter sink on the top as being oval and I understand that um, it's possible to buy this uh, particular engine as a ready machined uh, item um, and in the, the ones I've seen where that's uh, already been machined it, it is actually machined as an oval I suppose just to give you a little bit more space for some oil uh, to hold in the in the tops of these but things that um it, I don't, it doesn't really matter for me because if i'm running this i can keep an eye on the oil level and i could top this up in between this is not going to be run for hours anyway it will probably just get run a few times probably initially to show you if it does run at the end of all of this but um that's that's not really a problem so um I think now just a couple of operations to machine the seat here and to machine what to drill some little holes in all the little uh, flanges here that take the um, uh, the, uh, the little screws to hold it to a base um, I'm going to try and find a nice uh, hardwood base to, to, to mount the, the engine on so let's uh, now move on to the next uh, little part The next uh, job to do is to um, machine uh, the seat in here. That's to take the uh, the crosshead. Uh, uh, setting this up um, was a bit of a task. Um, obviously, I've got to get the the cutter in the the absolute middle position. Um, now, why um, I've done this is. Um, you saw me in the last sequence uh, drilling a hole through here it came out um, just a fraction over uh, three eighths uh, which is 375 thousandths it came out at uh, uh, just the fraction over 380 thousandths so what I made was a little uh, stud which I could push through here made it a, a good close fit and to hold it in position, uh, I use one of my tiny uh, 
little um, machinist clamps. This is a, a miniature one that I made uh, quite some time ago. So I, I just clamped that in place to hold it in position so that I wouldn't get any any sort of sideways movement so it would hold it in nice and tight. Um, the idea was to um, to edge find off each side here so I could find the centre. Uh, I tried using, obviously I couldn't use my electronic edge finder because it, the ball on the end of it is about 10 millimetre diameter and I would never have got it anywhere in it may have just about touched the edge but I didn't think that was going to be very reliable so I've got this other tiny edge finder which only has a six millimeter end to it but I did try this but I literally just couldn't get it to work basically I was getting poor readings all the time so I gave up on that idea um, so in the end what I did was put um a drill chuck in uh, the mill with uh, a little. Uh, this uh, this actually originally was a point. There's a point at the other end of this, so I use this. This is uh, I'm not quite sure what diameter it is, but this is a uh, silver set of drill rod. So I put that into uh, the uh, the head of the uh, milling machine, and then I touched off each side with this using um, the old engineer's trick of a piece of cigarette paper held down the side here and kept moving it until it gripped um, and then I, I tested this over and over again and set up the, uh, the DRO um, to give me the centre position. Uh, so uh, hopefully now I'm set up to get this uh, in the right position. Um, I've got a um, three quarter inch, the only three quarter inch end mill I've got. Um, it, the, the depth this has got to go to, um, the, the, the measurements that, that the, um, the, the drawing gives you um, is um, the height from the base here to the top here. Uh, sorry, to the, uh, the, the line that you you get the centre here and here is one inch point four two and you deduct from that uh, how much point zero nine four to give you the uh, the height that you need to machine this down to um, so that, that gives me um, a height from the base here up to here of one inch point three two six. Um, when this was on the surface plate, I did actually scribe some lines here uh, to give me um, a bit of a guide, basically. Um, so it's going to be machined, and it it, it seems it's it's probably only going to take uh, is only going to clean this bit up here and here uh, probably at each end as well going by where the line is you might just be, might just be able to see that uh, so that's the next thing to do this is going to be rather a nerve-wracking thing and when I've got the um, the base clamped in positively and at the end here I've also put a parallel sorry a um, toe clamp here you can just about see at this end pressed up against this end so that when I'm machining across hopefully it's, it's not going to move the uh, the base along so I'm hoping that nothing's going to move um, so I'm going to obviously take it very very lightly now um, whether this is a good idea or not I don't know but an idea I came up with to make sure I get the um, the uh, this is a two flute end mill to get it at the right height what I thought of doing was moving the the tool along and bringing it across here 
over this surface and then using uh, a stack of slip gauges to get the height. So I've got the slip gauges here, a stack that makes up at one inch 326 thousandths. Um, so if I very, very gently bring the um, the edge of the cutter down onto the, the top here, hopefully that's going to give me the, the right height. Uh, whether this is a good idea or not, I don't know. I mean, the other option is bringing the cutter down to the surface here and then raising it up to that height. I might try out both methods and just um, see how close the tip of the uh, cutter is to that line that I scribed on. I um, might try both methods. Um, well, that's it basically. So the next the step is to is to set this up uh, and then machine across here. Um, to be honest. Um, I'm not going to film this bit. Uh, I'm so nervous about doing this that uh, if this uh, goes completely wrong and I, I completely ruin the casting, I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but I think really I'm, I'm going to need every ounce of concentration I've got to do this. So at least I've shown you how I've set this up and how I intend, or the two different possible ways that I intended to do it. So. Hopefully one or these other one or the other methods will, will actually work, but we'll we'll see how we get on. But um, after I've done it, I'll bring you back and hopefully show you um, the end result, uh, good or bad. So I'm, I'm just going to leave it at there, I think, for the moment.
Well, I did film some of it. <laughs> I filmed this as a separate sequence, so um, if it didn't uh, didn't work, <laughs> you wouldn't see it at all. Um, so I've machined obviously all along here. This forms the, the the seat for the cross head, and I've also machined across here um, because there'll be um, some holes drilled at both ends here um, to take the screws and spacers for the uh, the crosshead caps these will sort of mount over the top these also got to be machines these have got to be machined down but uh, they will sit over the top here so it gives me a nice sort of flat surface here to uh, eventually uh, drill the holes and um, what I'm going to do also is use a, a smaller cutter um, to uh, machine across here as well to give me a, a nice flat surface here for the, the little spaces as, at the other end uh, so sort of uh, reasonably successful I hope um, so I wish I can add this bit in so that the, the, the video as well. So just to show you, this is the blank that uh, the crosshead's um, machined out of. This is uh, just a fraction under um, three quarters of an inch wide. So that will seat into here. And so that will run along. And that that obviously is, is connected up to the uh, the piston rod, which will come through here. So I've got I've got actually quite a nice uh, fit. Obviously, you don't want it to be tight. You don't want it to be loose. But that's that's it's nice. That's going to run quite smoothly in there. Uh, so I'm sort of quite pleased with that. There we are. So. On to the next bit now. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, um, the next bit's going to be <laughs> will be in part four. <laughs> um, if you're still with me, I thought I would just show you <laughs> what I've done since I did this these bits off camera, um, just to complete the the base, so that the base is uh, absolutely completed now. So. Uh, all the operations I've done were machining the, the base here nice and flat. Um, I cleaned up the tops of the guides here, uh, drilled the, the hole through here for the, uh, the shaft for the flywheel. If I can find that hole. Actually show that that does fit through. This is the part that was actually supplied. Um, I don't actually know what this material is. I mean, I thought you would probably use um, silver steel or drill rod for this, but I did check it and it is absolutely round. Um, I mean, I would have probably used silver steel. In fact, I may possibly replace it with silver steel. This has got some sort of tarnish to it, but um, I guess that will clean up okay. And I drilled the little uh, holes through here to oil the shaft as well. Um, uh, see, drilled through here, slightly oversized to the three eighths uh, that the drawing called for, but um, I don't think that matters because the uh, cylinder end cap locates through here. So as long as the cylinder end cap is a, a really good fit to this, I don't think that really matters. And the last bit I showed you was lining up the uh, uh, the piece here so that I could get the uh, the seat uh, here for the uh, the cross head absolutely in the middle. Um, and I've also machined across the sides here and through here as well so that I can... Uh, easily drill the holes for the uh, uh, 
uh, for the crosshead cover to sit across here between the screws uh, and the cross well between the crosshead and the, the top here there are little spacers that go in here to give you the, the correct height for the crosshead um, the other part I mentioned I've got to do I just did that off camera because it's not very exciting was to um, spot face all the, uh, the little lugs here uh, for the uh, fixing screws to um, a, a wooden base uh, the um, I'm, I mentioned earlier, I'm not using the Phyllis the head screws that came with the kit I've got these really nice uh, little uh, hex head screws uh, to use and they will fit quite nicely these are um, uh, eight, I think it's eighth, eighth of an inch so they will drop through there very nicely and I think they will look I think they will look really nice as well not sure yet um, how I'm going to attach these I'll either fit them this way the other option is to um, mount them up through a base so that a little bit of the uh, screw comes through and these are the I had these came with little uh, eighth inch nuts as well so um, what I could do is just mount them like that and then put the little nuts on the top um, most, most likely on a full size engine that's probably how they would be attached I think so that's another option there so basically um, the uh, the base is finished <laughs> I've done everything on it um, one little job I do, which I mentioned earlier, the accident I had is to possibly put some little bits of filler in here. Well, that probably isn't going to notice. I might just dab some filler into that just to sort of even it out a bit. Um, the other thing I did check, obviously, also is that the part does lay perfectly flat as well thing that was worrying me all, all the time I was doing the machining is that um, the stress of machining this whether it would have uh, I would have lost the uh, the flatness here but I don't appear to have done it, it, it does lie nice and flat so I've got no worries about that uh, at all so um, I've just now got to decide um What's the next part I'm going to uh, to machine to show you? Not quite sure yet. I've got quite a big choice of of bits um, I, I can machine up. Um, probably um, pick uh, one or two sort of easy parts to do first. I think because this was uh, quite stressful doing this uh, uh, the base itself. So uh, I think I would like to sort of couple of uh, slightly easier bits next, but we'll see. Anyway, that, that is uh, bye from me now, and uh, we'll see you uh, in the next video. Bye for now.